All right, welcome everybody. This is Advanced Topics and Math Studies, my periods five and six. We're going to talk today about 7.1 part one. Hopefully you got the note sheet from Focus. Um, and I'm just going to walk you through the note sheet like we do in class when we have a lesson. So today again is 7.1 part one. We're going to still talk about trigonometry. We're going to discuss the law of sines today. We're going to be solving for missing parts of a triangle. And we're going to be given two angles and one side and solve for the missing angles and sides. Now, you all know that most of the time trigonometry is reserved for right triangles. But there are some properties and, and formulas and laws that apply to non-right triangles as well. The law of sines is one of them. So we're going to use the law of sines for non-right triangles. Now, I guess you could technically use this formula or law for right triangles, but there's really no need to. You would just use a normal trigonometry if you have a right triangle. Now, one thing that's important is because we're dealing in normal triangles where our angles are in degrees, make sure your calculator or whatever you're using is not set to radians. You want your calculator or whatever device you're using set to degrees. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the law of sines. This is going to help us solve four missing parts of a triangle. Let's go ahead and draw a generic triangle. Any triangle will do. Let's go ahead and label the angles or vertices A, B, and C. Capital letters for angles and vertices. And let's go ahead and label the sides as well. Let's use the same letters A, B, and C, but use lowercase. And the side, which is opposite that angle, let's use the same letter. So for instance, this side opposite angle A, we'll call side A, but lowercase a. Side B, opposite angle B, and side C, opposite angle C. All right, so we have six parts, three sides, three angles. Here is the law of sines formula. It is side A over the sine of angle A is equal to side B over the sine of angle B. And you can probably guess what comes next. The third fraction is side C over the sine of angle C. Now, you can also have the sines of the angles on the top or in the numerator and have the sides A, B, and C in the denominator if you prefer. So sometimes you'll see this law or formula written um, with the signs on the top and the lowercase a, b, and c's on the bottom. As long as you make the fractions the same and consistent, you can do it either way. Don't have the sign on top for one and the sign on another on the bottom. Don't do that. Now, you're not really going to ever set up all three fractions. You're only going to really set up two. So you're going to make a proportion when you use this formula, remember a proportion is two equal fractions and then the way you solve a proportion, most of y'all remember, is to cross multiply. So after you plug in the numbers, into the two fractions, into the formula you're using, you go ahead and cross multiply to solve for what you're solving for. In this case, in part one, in this lesson, we will be solving for um, two missing sides. 
Okay, the third angle is very easy to find. And we'll use the law of sines formula to solve for the other two sides. All right, so here we go. Let's see how we use this in example one. Now, the directions say to solve each triangle. And we've talked about that before. What that means is to find every missing side and angle. Like we said at the top of the notes, you're going to be given two angles, and you'll be given one side. So we're going to solve for the third angle and the other two missing sides. Now, the third angle is very easy to find. You know all three angles add up to 180. So simply subtract 48 and 53 from the sum of the angles in a triangle 180. And that will leave you 79 degrees, which is angle C. All right, now we have to find the other two missing sides. It really does not matter which one you go for first, okay? So let's just go in alphabetical order. Let's go ahead and solve for A. Now, here is side A and the angle across from it is 48. The other side and angle pair that you know that are opposite each other are side B at 15 and angle B at 53. So you're going to use 48 degrees and A, and you're going to also use 53 degrees and 15 in the formula to solve for side A. So what we can do, since we're solving for side A, you can put A over the sine of A, which is the sine of 48 degrees, Set that equal to side B, which is 15, over the sine of B, which is a sine of 53 degrees. Now, before you cross multiply, you have to get rid of the signs. And you do that by plugging them into your calculator and getting the decimal ratio for the sine of each of these angles. So plug in sine 48. Again, make sure your calculator is set to degrees, and also plug in and find the sine of 53 degrees. When you do that, rounding to either three or four decimal places for accuracy, you should get about 0.743 for sine of 48 degrees, and about 0.799 for the sine of 53. Now, since all you have are three numbers and one variable, you can cross multiply. So multiply 15 times 0.743. Whatever you get for that product, you can divide by 0.799, and that will get you the length of side A. So again, 0.743 times 15, divide that result by 0.799. And at the very end, you can round the side to one decimal place, the nearest tenth. And that should get you 13.9 approximately for side A. All right, now we have to solve for the last side, side C. And you're pretty much going to do the exact same thing you just did, except with A, you're going to use C. Okay, so you can set up another proportion, side C over the sine of angle C, which is the sine of 79. And set that equal to, either one of these is fine, now that you know side A, let's just go ahead and stick with B and B. 
So 15 over the sine of 53. Now you already know the sine of 53 from over here, 0.799. The sine of 79 should be about 0.981. And you, again, you like you did here, you can cross multiply. So 0.981 times 15. Divide that result by 0.799. And that should get you about 18.4 for side C. And there you have it. We have all three missing parts. We have solved the triangle. And that's example one. All right, let's go ahead and look at number two on the back. We're not going to run through the entire number two because most of it is just like what we did. But sometimes you might run into a minor complication or snag on a problem like 22. And that is because of the following. If you look at the triangle, again, it's not a right triangle. But one of the angles is obtuse. You have an obtuse angle right here. Now, you might not always run into problems with an obtuse angle when you're doing trigonometry. It depends on the calculator you're using or the trigonometric ratio chart you might be using online or whatever program you're using. Some calculators and programs will handle obtuse angles, some will not. But if you run into an error, trying to find the sine of, say, 113 degrees in a obtuse angle. Here's what you do. Here's how you encounter this. If you have an obtuse angle and it's causing you problems with whatever calculator or program or instrument you're using, then what you can do is subtract that angle from 180. And use the sine of that angle instead. And again, that's only if you get some type of error message. If your calculator is set to degrees and you enter sine of 113 and you get a normal decimal, then all should be okay. And you do the problem like we did number one. So in this case, 180 minus 113 is 67 degrees. So you would use the sine of 67 in the formula, not the sine of 113. Because the sine of 67 degrees is the same as the sine of 113 degrees. And that is because it has to do with reference angles on the unit circle, something we've gone over in, back in Chapter 5 earlier in the year. The reference angle for 113 degrees is the acute angle 67 degrees. So both of those have the same sign. That's why if you subtract from 180, you're finding the reference angle 67 for 113, and you can use that instead of 113. All right. Uh, the homework for 7.1 part one, you guys, should be on focus. And you should be good to go. Thanks for listening to my ratchety voice. And uh, I will send another 
note sheet and homework assignment either Wednesday or Thursday later in the week on Focus, as well as a YouTube video tutorial taking you through the note sheet. All right, guys, thanks again. Take care and stay healthy. Bye-bye.